the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the area. <coughs> and when you're working with guitars, um, especially ones that are old like this, you don't want to immediately start applying solvents. And so I'm not going to use some kind of a cleaner. I'm going to use the thing that is the uh, best um, initial cleaner for anything you're doing on your guitar, including cleaning your fretboard. If you like, if you if you need to clean your fretboard, the best thing um, for it is not some product, but it is water, a little bit of tiny bit of water on a rag, a soft rag, and some elbow grease. Hi, Emmy. Come here. You want to talk to the people? Come here, Key. Come here. Oh, show them. Show them our key. Look at that. Oh, no, you can't go climb on the guitar. That that would be not good. That would not be good. Yeah, you're going to have to stay down. From there. Okay. Here. Let's show them Emmy. She's cute. Hey, Emmy. She's very curious about what's going on. She says, Daddy, you haven't done anything up here for a while. Man, that looks awesome. Got my rag a little bit wet. I'm just going to clean up as much as I can around the area where the crack is. on this K. <clears throat> I'm going to let that dry for a little bit and then try to shove some glue in there. The good news is that that crack does not extend through to the other side of the neck. That is really very good news. However, the bad news is that getting any glue at all inside of that crack without actually prying it apart to um, make room for it, um, which of course would just create huge new damage, getting any glue at all in there is going to be really, really challenging. Toothpicks are usually my go-to solution for poking glue into difficult places, but I don't think a toothpick is going to be of any use in this situation. And so I'm going to try two different things. One is a saxophone reed, which, you know, I have these around because they're, uh, because they're busted. Or in this case, because it's actually a clarinet reed and I don't play the clarinet. My dad played the saxophone and the clarinet and had a whole bunch of reeds of various kinds uh, mixed in with his saxophone reeds that I have inherited. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to use something a little crazier. A utility knife blade. I know, that sounds crazy. So I'm really thrilled on first attempt by just how far into the crack I can get that clarinet reed. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy to get glue in there, but that is actually a substantial distance that the reed itself will go in. So, got to make sure I have paper towels handy because we don't want any more of that glue than is necessary oozing out the side. Now, if my glue, my wood glue. Gorilla glue, gorilla wood glue, for the toughest jobs on planet Earth. I am not a paid spokesperson for gorilla products. I wish I was. And restore and fix up and see what it's capable of. As I work on this, glue on that 
our net read now. I just am aware that what I'm doing right here is very likely to be the easiest thing I do in this entire project. And that's a little bit discouraging. Because I just remember when I did my previous guitar projects, everything, everything, except for one thing at the very end of the project, I found a really easy way to do something. And, and it was put neck dots on the side on the edge of the of the uh, fretboard, and it and it was simple and easy, and it turned out really, really beautifully. And I was just so delighted because everything else I did with the entire project became turned out to be time consuming and complicated, and didn't go the way it was expected. Reed is pretty chopped up now, which means there's a few pieces of clarinet reed in there in your guitar neck now, Kevin. I'm wondering if that's enough or if I should try to fit a little bit more in. It'll, it'll all come squeezing out the sides, of course. But how much can I actually shove in there? See if we can shove that in a little more. That's good. It's time to wipe some off and assign a clarinet reed, which is at least 50 years old, to the literal dustbin of history. Could you metaphorically? Or figuratively come here? Alright. Oh yes, there's glue in there. Woohoo! Yay, 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 yay. Okay. Clamp in time. Clamp in time. That's like dinner time. Actually it's nothing like dinner time. I have no idea how that would be like dinner time. Where'd my clamps go? Here they are. Have a couple little old baby clamps. Just perfect for this situation. And some little blocks of scrap wood, which, you know, I kept around for years after some sort of project that they came from. And, you know, and I was always like thinking, why am I keeping these blocks of wood? They're, they're just taking up space. And then I started working on guitars. And lo and behold, I was really glad to have a few little blocks of scrap wood around. Okay, well that was a case in point about things always being harder than you think. Because it took a long time to get that clamp stabilized, but I finally got it. Now what I'd be likely to do would be to like try like, tighten it just too much and then it fall apart. But I'm not going to. I am really pleased with how well that went because I really had no idea I was going to be able to get any glue into that joint not joint, it's not a joint, it's a crack into that crack and it turned out to be the clarinet reeds that made it work there's our crack Most of the glue got cleaned up pretty well. There's still glue in there. And we're just gonna we're gonna cover this guitar up with a towel because I always 
keep it covered up when I'm not working on it. And then see how it comes out tomorrow. Next day, the clamps removed and things are looking pretty good. I'm pleased with this first repair.